All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er video as we look ahead to training camp. And we are brought to you by Pig and a Pickle. Check them out. Emeryville, Corte Madera. They've got two locations. They're open seven days a week in Marin County from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. They're open Wednesday through Sunday in Emeryville. Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Well, let's talk about a player that really opened my eyes during minicamp, and that is Kalen Laburn. Uh, the running back for Marshall, 5'11", 205 pounds, uh, really good player this year in Conference USA. And, you know, he's just a really interesting talent. And the physical talent that you see when you watch Kalen Laburn out there is just plain as day. He's a former five-star recruit, um, and, you know, he he's just a tremendous athlete. Um, you know, he... The, Basically, he's a guy that, you know, he's got he's got tremendous power with the ball in his hands. He runs with great motivation um, and he has explosion in short areas and you can see it. And it's really evident very quickly. He's he can explode into contact. Um, he, he's definitely can has great contact balance. And you see the combination of the quick twitch and the frame that he has allows him to, to, you know, he breaks, he, he, he can break tackles. Um, and this guy's done it. This guy's done it against good defensive teams. He had a big day against Notre Dame last year. Uh, he's got raw potential and, you know, it's like you're watching a player when you watch Kalen Laburn, that really is special. Um, and you can see it right away. This guy was a five-star guy coming out of high school. and um, you know, went to Florida state and then transferred to Marshall and it's been a circuitous route for sure. But this guy's got a ton of talent. He really does. Um, he's really impressive. And they, when you look at his workload last year, he was incredible. I mean, absolutely incredible. Now, why did he leave Florida state? Well, he got dismissed from the program, a violation of team rules. That's all the data we have on that. But, um, you know, this guy went to Marshall and became just a tremendous player. And th this year had over 300 carries. And he's just a big-time talent. Um, really, really solid running back with great balance, great vision. Um, this guy, and he's got real thick lower body so he can take hits. You know, I mean, he's he's a physical back. He runs between the tackles, but he's got the speed to get outside. And he's just a really, really solid football player. Um, you're talking about a guy who, if he had stayed at Florida State um, and not wound up at Marshall, you know, who knows? Maybe he would have been a, a day one or day two. Well, he wouldn't have been a day one, but probably a day two pick. Instead, he wound up going after the draft. Um, his 40 time is 4-5-2, but if you watch him play, he plays faster than that. He got invited to the Hula Bowl. He's done some really impressive things. He went to... Uh, high school, Catholic high school. He was a four-star four uh, or five-star recruit by ESPN and uh, eventually wound up at Florida State and then transferred to Marshall. And whereas a sophomore in 2022, he played in 12 games, rushed for an outstanding 1,445 yards on 282 carries, over five yards a carry, 16 touchdowns, five fumbles. He did have five fumbles. And then he can catch the ball in the backfield. He had 17 receptions for 122 yards. So. You know, he, he's got big time, he's got big time, flexible ankles. He can turn the corner. He can get around the perimeter, uh, when the opportunity presents itself, he's got straight line speed to outrun angles. You see guys take, you see defenders take bad angles. He's got great feet. Uh, he can run between the tackles. He can make guys miss in the open field. He's got very good vision, really good patience can pick and slide. He's kind of a compact runner and, you know, it's, he is that combination of balance and agility and instincts. And sometimes you'll see backs that look similar, come out of similar, similar programs. This guy reminds me a little bit of like a poor man's Dalvin cook. He's very, very, uh, compact and balanced. And yet, um, there's a toughness about him. This guy will, he, he will block and he, 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 he likes to block. Now he'll cut you as a blocker, um, but man, I mean he's he's 
He's really a tenacious blocker. He enjoys blocking. Uh, as a runner, he's not slow. You know, he's not necessarily that super home run threat, but he's got really good hands. He can help you in the passing game. Um, now, he ran a, a very limited route tree in college, so he doesn't run every route. But, man, he's, a, he's just an impressive player. And when, you, when I saw him in minicamp, I thought to myself, wow, this guy's got power. He's got balance. He's got explosion. He caught a ball right in front of me on the sideline, and then the defender had a good angle on him, but he made a miss, and he got down the sideline and, and took it an extra 10 yards. And you can kind of tell guys take, guys are not anticipating um, that kind of quickness on this kind of a player. Uh, he's, as I said, 5'11", about 200 pounds. He looks to me a lot like Dalvin Cook. A very, he's a Virginia Beach, Virginia kid, um, but he's and he's just a, to my, to when you watch him, I see a lot of Dalvin Cook. I see a guy who who definitely looks like um, the kind of player that can bust a big run on you, but at the same time, you know, he also, you know, is a guy who can catch the ball to the backfield. You know, he started off at Norfolk State, um, and and then he moved around, but man. You're talking about a guy who, you know, re, I mean, if he had not been dismissed from Florida State's program, you know, and didn't then did not play at all in 2020 or 2021, um, you're talking about a guy who probably would have been a much higher draft choice, but he gets dismissed from the Florida State program, then didn't play for a couple of years. And I think just overall kind of fell off their people's radar. Um I, I like what I see, though. He's got speed. He's got explosiveness. He can make plays outside the tackle uh, box. He, you know, he's good in pass protection. He understands how to pick and slide, and good at finding those inside run lanes. He can make himself skinny in the hole and get through quickly and get to that second level. There's a lot to like about Kalen Labor for sure. And when you watch him, you sit there and go, "Wow, this guy went undrafted." I mean, that's that's pretty amazing from being a five-star guy coming out of Bishop Sullivan High School in Virginia to going to Florida State to then leaving Florida State, being out, not playing football for a couple of years, winding up at Marshall, and you're sitting there watching this, and you're going, wow, this guy was incredible. Um, this this guy's got a lot of talent. You know, this is, a, this is a player who probably would have been a higher-rated player if he had just, you know, if he had just had a different route. Uh, instead, you know, he kind of bounced around a little bit and, but what a year he had this year. I mean, just a perusal of his game log for the year just kind of shows what kind of player he really was. I mean, this guy lit it up, um, tremendous, tremendous player. I mean, really the, the guy had the kind of year that you just dream of having if you're a college football player. I mean, let, let's look at his, his season. Um, they start off against Norfolk state. He has 12 carries for 102 yards and two touchdowns, eight and a half yards a carry. But then they play Notre Dame in South bend in week two. And they pulled the upset largely because labor went off. He had 31 carries for 163 yards, five, three, a carry. And he got in the end zone. Um, so then he fo follows it up against Bowling green the next week, 24 carries, 157 yards, two touchdowns, six and a half yards a pop. Then against Troy, he had 30 carries for 118 yards and a touchdown. Then Gardner-Webb, 35 carries, 191 yards, two touchdowns. 26 carries against uh, Louisiana for 120 and two more touchdowns. 30 carries the next week against James Madison for 151 yards, two touchdowns, five yards a carry. I mean, the guy really was used a ton. He had 281 carries in the regular season, then 21 more in the postseason against Connecticut. Uh, so he had one up at 302 carries and he averaged five yards a carry on 302 carries. So, I mean, that's incredible. And then you mix in the fact that he had 16 receptions for over a hundred and hundred yards receiving. He can do it as a receiver, but this guy, I mean, you're talking about, let's see, one, two, he had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He had 10 games this year where he had 90 or more rushing yards in the game and finished up in the Myrtle Beach Bowl 
uh, with 21 carries for 90 yards. So you're talking about a very productive player with great, great natural speed and instincts. He's got good bulk too. You're talking about five eleven, but you know, maybe 215 pounds. Uh, and yet he's very natural at that, at that weight. He can break tackles. Remember that name when you get to training camp this summer and you're looking at who can make it, who's a surprise, Kalen Laburn. It's not LeBorn, it's Laburn. Kalen Laburn started at Florida State, finished at Marshall, and what a player he is. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of The Krug Show, and thanks to all of you for supporting The Krug Show on YouTube.